Today we are going to be learning the easiest solution to the mirror cube. The mirror cube is a 3x3 shape mod, which means that even though the pieces are different shapes, it's going to be the same solution as a 3x3. As you can see here, each side is still 3 pieces by 3 pieces. And even as we sort of mix up the cube, it's still going to be 3 pieces by 3 pieces. That means that once you know how to solve the 3x3, you will easily be able to solve this. Now, just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to teach you how to solve the 3x3. So, if you don't know how to solve this, please view my page and you can see an easy tutorial. Then you can move to the mirror cube. Since the mirror cube is all one color, we're going to solve it based on the shapes of the pieces rather than looking for colors. So what I like to do is I like to pretend that this thinnest side is the white side, and I usually start with these pieces. I do this because on the mirror cube there's no other pieces that are quite as thin as these, so they're quite easy to spot. So since this is a solved cube, we can look at it for a second. So we know that if two colors are the same next to each other, they're going to be smooth next to each other. Now if we did one turn, now we can tell that all of these are one color, but these other three aren't because we can't run our finger smoothly along them. So as we are solving this cube, we're going to have to look for things like this so that we can tell which colors are which. Now our first step, of course, is going to be to get the white cross. Now this is easy on a 3x3 because we can see the colors really easily and just pair up our four pieces. But on the mirror cube, it's hard to tell which one of these centers is going to be the thinnest center. So what I do is find just any one of the thinnest edges. So here we found one of them. Now just move that thin edge around the cube until you find a center that it matches up with. As you can see, this thinnest center is the same depth as this, which means that this is going to be our white center. Now we will just move this around until we have paired it up. So this would be the equivalent of getting one of our cross edge pieces. Now, we look for the other three thinnest edges. Here's one. And I'm not going to go too in detail with this because I trust that you can already make your white cross. And then you will just continue to find the thinnest pieces. This last one. Until you've made your white cross. So you'll know you've made it when you have a smooth cross that also fits in all the center pieces. It might take some guesswork at first, maybe putting an edge in, realizing it's wrong, then taking it out and moving around. But once you solve this a couple of times, you'll remember these four edges and which centers they go in. The white side is fairly easy to get on a Rubik's Cube because you can easily see which side is white and then bring it down. Now with the mirror cube, at first it's going to take a little bit of guesswork. So you should be able to spot which of the corners have the thinnest part on it. That means that the top is going to be our white side. So this would be the equivalent of a corner with white facing up. Now we are just going to have to look around and guess if it's over its slot. Now, once you solve this more often, you'll remember the four different corners and which slots they go in. Simply just do your algorithm and put these corners in. Now it's perfectly fine if you put a corner in wrong, you just have to take it out and then move it into its correct slot. You'll know that you've built a whole side when you have smooth lines all the way around and it's also all smooth on the top. Now I'm going to assume that you know this algorithm to put edges into the second layer. We're going to use the same algorithm on the mirror cube. Now you notice before you start it, you set the edge up over where it's supposed to be and these two are the same color. That means that on a gold cube, these are going to be the same depth so we can feel for that. So. Here's an example of an edge that's over where it's supposed to be. So you can see these two are the same depth, but what I'm going to have to do is recognize whether it's going to go into the left or right slot. So you can sort of just eyeball this. You can tell that since it's this thick, it's probably not going to go into this thin slot. And then you can just do your algorithm, and then you're going to put it in. Now you're going to have to recognize which one of these edges are actually yellow edges. This would be, you know, edges that you wouldn't want to put into your second layer. So the thinnest side on a mirror cube is always going to be opposite the thickest side. So if you see any pieces such as this one, that's just really long, longer than any of the other pieces, 
you can just safely assume that it's not going to be one of your second layer edges. All right, now you'll just continue this process until you fill your whole second layer. Now, I hope this is starting to make more sense. So, normally on a 3x3, three three, it would just be easy to see where our yellow pieces are facing up, and then we'll just do our algorithm to get across. On the mirror cube, we'll just see which one of these are the same depth. So this would be our bar case. We'll just do the same algorithm. And then you'll know you've built your last layer across when you have all four pieces that are the same depth. Now, getting our edges into their correct slots should also be pretty easy. You can see that since these are the same color, these are gonna be the same depth. So we can tell on a mirror cube when we have two edges that are in their correct slots. Then we can just simply do our algorithm and then you'll know that you fixed all the edges when you can run your finger on them and they're all going to act smoothly. Now that we are on to the last few steps, we run into a couple tricky problems. So it's easy to tell on a three by three that this is in its correct slot because we can see the red, blue, and yellow. But if you look closely, none of these colors are next to the same color. So on a mirror cube, it would be pretty hard to tell that this is in its right slot. For example, this corner right now is in its right slot but it's hard to tell because none of the pieces are smooth. So what we can do to tell if a corner is in its right slot is first of all, if it's the same smoothness on top, but it's not on any other side, that means that it's not in its right slot. Because that means that yellow is facing up, but neither of these two colors are the same. Now also, you'll just have to sort of do a little bit of guesswork and just imagine if I were to just turn this corner, would it look perfect like a cube. So if you just sort of look at this for a second and just imagine it turning up, you can sort of see that this is going to be in its correct slot. Now we will just do our algorithm to put the rest of the corners in their spots. And then you're just going to have to imagine turning these for a second. And it looks like all four of our corners are in the right slots. Now it's a little hard to see because we have no smooth pieces for this part but they are in the right slots. Now, you'll just simply go to your next step, and you'll note that the corner is in when it looks like a perfect cube, so we'll just keep going around. Once again, I'm assuming you already know all these steps because at the beginning of the video, I said that you should know how to solve the three by three. And then it's easy to see when the cube is done because it will just look like a cube. And there you go. That's how to solve the mirror cube in the easiest amount of steps. Now, of course, there are still more advanced ways. You could easily use any three by three method on this if you just really think about it abstractly. Like I could do a T-perm algorithm and just sort of look at these pieces. You know, I still have a set of headlights, two corners and edges that need to swap. So you could easily use any three by three method on the mirror cube and it's really fun. Another impressive trick with the mirror cube is blind solving. Now, since it's only one color, you should ideally be able to feel for all the pieces, even with zero seconds of inspection. I'm not going to go over that too in depth. I figured it out pretty easily on my own, and I think you can too, even if you've never blind solved a cube before. I hope this video is helpful to you. You can view my page for more tutorials, and for the future, good luck.